Hi. Today I'm outside to upgrade one of our architectural lighting installations and we have a wonderful day in autumn. The area here in the heart of Germany is wonderful and the leaves on the trees are starting to turn their colors from a dark green to a beautiful yellow. But the days are getting shorter and shorter and this is what happens when it gets dark. In today's episode we want to change this darkness and let this wonderful building shine in a worthy light in the evening. In November 2013 we changed the lighting of our church from conventional spotlights to LEDs. LEDs basically have a long life expectation and could last around 100,000 hours. If the lamps would shine every day for about 6 hours that corresponds to an amazing 45 years. Unfortunately such LED lamps consist not only of the LEDs themselves but also a circuit board and a power supply. Since the lamps are directly exposed to the environmental influences here, the ultraviolet components of the sunlight damage the housing of this LED case, allowing water to enter. This damaged the lamps over the last two years. Since the damage to the circuit board is quite severe, I would therefore like to remove all the old LEDs and replace them with new lamps. Let's go! Previously, the lamps were connected directly to distributor boxes. Because I'm lazy, I cut the old devices directly to mount waterproof connections later. The old lamps were mounted on fancy stone bases, but now they do not fit to the new lamps mechanically. So I will use short aluminum bars here to mount the new lamps. Maybe there is a better solution, but this will do the job for now. As power connections, I'm using the included ones of the new devices, unscrew it and put them on the short connectors from the distribution boxes. The DMX connectors are waterproofed as well. Now that the hardware seems to work fine, we have to do some work on the software side. LED lamps are nothing special today, but our lighting control should get a special feature. Since this is a church, it makes sense to match the colors of the lighting to the liturgical colors. The liturgical colors white, purple, red, black and green can also be associated with special holidays like Christmas, Easter and so on. So we need a controller that has a calendar function and a memory to recall special colors for these special days. Several years ago I used a simple 8-bit microcontroller from Atmel, now owned by Microchip, with 60 MHz clock rate for the control. Why? Because it was sufficient to do the task. 
In the last video we used the Arduino IDE with a 32-bit Cortex-M0 processor together with an FPGA. Of course, I could use the Arduino IDE again, but where would be the diversity? Today I used the quite powerful Bascom programming language with a low-cost microcontroller, the ATmega32. Bascom offers a wide range of different functions and libraries similar to the Arduino environment. For our lighting control, we need several functions here. In this video I only want to highlight the most interesting functions for you. The time receiver, the calculation of the special holidays, the sunset calculation and the fading functions. A DCF77 receiver. This is a radio signal freely available in Europe, which can be used to get time, date and also basic weather information with any device you could imagine. It uses a quite simple structure and it is nice to use even in distant areas. The time information is transmitted both by an amplitude shift keying, which is the older method, and since mid-1983 in parallel by a phase modulation. Compared to amplitude shift keying, phase modulation allows a more precise absolute temporal resolution by several orders of magnitude for the detection of the beginning of a second. With this signal we can receive the following. The minute, the hour, the day of month, the day of the week, the month itself, the year and, if it is the daylight saving time, or not. To save some energy, the LED lamps should turn on only when the sun goes down. We could calculate the sunset hour for each day dynamically, but it is a quite challenging calculation for a small microcontroller. Rob Tiller discusses an approximation with trigonometric functions in the Arduino forum, but we do not need a high time resolution for our application here. So it is much easier to calculate the sunset for each month at the location of the church and put these values into the EEPROM. With a small linear interpolation function we obtain a sufficiently accurate time for each day. To calculate the special Christian holidays, to call colors depending on the liturgical calendar, we must understand how they are related to each other. The movable feasts usually depend on Easter. Ash Wednesday, Easter minus 46, Good Friday, Easter minus 2, Ascension Day, Easter plus 39 and so on, you get the point. Originally the determination of the date of Easter was very inconsistently regulated in the various Christian communities. Thus Easter is between March 22nd and April 25th. How does this information help us? Well, as a movable feast we must do a bit of math, but thankfully there were great minds in the past who did most of the work. In 1800 the mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss presented his algorithm for calculating the date of the Julian or Gregorian Easter, which is now known as Gauss Easter algorithm. According to the legend, he had originally restricted his attempts to simply finding out the exact day of his own birth. The story goes that he had learned from his mother that his birthday was 8 days before the feast of Ascension of the Lord which would have been 39 days after Easter Sunday in the year 1777. Some other missing important dates can be calculated based on Christmas and the 1st of Advent. Which is a moving day again, but the calculation is much easier. If Christmas is on a Sunday, we have to subtract 21 days, otherwise we take care of the distance to the previous Sunday. For smooth scene changes, we need to program some code to count up or count down the individual channels. As the 16-bit timer of the microcontroller is already used by the DCF77 receiver, we can use the low resolution timer to call an interrupt function every one millisecond. With 16 MHz and a prescaler of 128, we can preload the timer counter so that we can get the desired timing. In this ISR here, we compare the desired value to the current value and add or subtract the pre-calculated step for this individual channel to reach the desired value in the correct time. At the end we need several helper functions for saving and loading scenes from the EEPROM and to get the menu functions to work. Finally we can test the changes to the code, so let's get back to the church. Well, now we are here at the roof of our church and this is the control unit of our lighting installation. 
10 years ago I didn't think about upgrading the firmware because everything worked very well and now as we changed the lamps we have to upgrade the firmware. And because I have no external upgrade port like a USB connection or external ISP connector, so in system programming, we have to open this box and have a look inside. I do not have any pictures from the inside of this control unit, so I'm really thrilled what I did 10 years ago and let's see. We have one RCD with 30 milliamps. We have two fuses, one for the lamps outside and one fuse for the control unit here and the control unit itself. Here's the main controller, the IT Mega 32. Here's our DCF77 receiver with the antenna, some voltage regulator. Below this heatsink is a triac to turn on or turn off the lamps outside. And here we have the RS485 controller to output the DMX signal through these three wires. So a signal plus, signal minus and ground. Well, as you can see here in the upper left corner, there are the ISP connectors from the Atmel controller. And so we have to use this upper left connector here to upload our new software. So first we have to check if the programmer can recognize our controller. So I click on search here and this is not the case. Well, for any reason, this shiny little programming board here will not connect to my microcontroller in the control unit. So I have no clue why. The connections are fine. Let's try to use my self-made programming board here. It's based on an AT Mega 8. It's an USB ASP programming board. And yeah, it looks a bit sketchy, but let's try it and we will see if it is working. And let's try to search for the controller. And yeah, it is finding our AT Mega 32. So now I can open my file here. It's kls.hex and we will flash it to our controller here. Well done, it says okay. Let's put this thing together and see if it is working. And now turn it on, the RCD, and it's booting up. Firmware version 2.0, that's fine. Now that we have a current firmware version on this controller, we will see what happens if I call a scene. Well, the control seems to work and the lights are on, but the new LEDs have a bit different color than the old LEDs, so I have to readjust my scenes here in the controller, but this can be done without uploading a new firmware. I can do this on the menu. The clock is not set yet to the correct date and time, but it takes a couple of hours to get the correct signals through these walls here of the church. They are around half a meter. Well done, so we have a working controller here, working LEDs, and now we're done here. I'm aware that today's project was not the most ambitious project I've done so far, but maybe you were searching for such kind of solution. Using a low-cost microcontroller together with a DCF77 receiver is a nice option to control lighting installations with some extra functions in areas without internet, like in this building here. Of course, DCF77 is only available in Europe, but if it's not available for you, you could attach a real-time clock or a low-cost GPS receiver to get the current date and time. This project was a nice opportunity to get in touch with a different microcontroller again. Each programming language has its own feeling and for me it's like a kind of sport to use multiple languages depending on the use case. For each project there is a best fitting type of microcontroller of course. I'm not sure if this was the best solution here, but it was fun working with the AVR series again. Please let me know in the comments what combination of microcontroller and language you would have preferred for this use case here. Maybe a Raspberry Pi with Python or an ESP32 with C++? What do you think? Please let me know, stay tuned for the next episode and see you next time.